pop quiz. What's the difference between a linear touch and a follow-up and a nonlinear touch? Because I think I think this is this is a, a big component of this. What? Give me a definition of a linear touch. Okay, like I told you, I was interested. You're supposed to be following up with me. We're trying to go those seven touches. What would a linear touch mean? I was thinking about you today. It doesn't have any value. So okay. Well, that would be a non-linear touch. So I want you to think of a linear touch as a, more like, have you seen enough to make a decision? Okay. It's like a direct punch. Okay. Right? It's like, hey, you told me what you wanted. Here it is. Is there anything stopping you from making a decision? It's a little bit, I won't say more aggressive, but it's like a little bit more to the point. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, we've been talking about this. You told me you wanted to take action. You wanted to get this closed before December 31st. It's here, man. We've served it up. Is anything stopping you from taking action? That's like a right hook, linear, which means I'm coming right at you. Nonlinear is what you said. There, you know, there's two things I didn't tell you the other day that you need to know about putting this deal together by the 31st. So it may not be as aggressive, but it may say, I know you want to close by the 31st of this year. There's two things we got to get finished to make it happen. It's a little bit softer of a way to go back to person, right? So think of having a whole storehouse of nonlinear touches over here. I use blogs, videos. Um, you know, I feel like what you do with me about the Airbnb is nonlinear touch. It's just like a little soft touch. Hey, coach, here's what's happening. It's not like, hey, you want to buy a house today? <laughs> it's, okay? Most agents are not using these. So what happens is the brain, when you just come at me the same way every time, my brain checks out. And it's like, here comes Susan, it's the same, same thing. She called me last week, same time, same conversation. So not, this is why you need to create some nonlinear touches. Because in the seven touch system, let's say I'm working on you, maybe one touch is, hey, have you seen enough to take action? No, I've not. Okay, I'm gonna feed you some more information. Hey, I did a little bit more research on this subdivision. I did a little bit more research on this house. There's two things I didn't tell you the first time, just wanna get that to you. Take a look at them when you have a chance. That's a nonlinear touch. Linear is, hey man, you told me you wanted it and I got it. Let's go. What's stopping us? Today's December the 1st or whatever date or almost December 1st. We only got 30 days to close this puppy. So if you're in, let's go. Right? Okay. If you're an agent, should you be writing the, should you be writing the blogs and things like that to position yourself as a person of interest? Yes. yes. See, it, yeah. <laughs> that's right. If not, you can hire somebody. And, that's right. And the reason I really think, the, the reason we try to create a bunch of these things is really for the sales team. Mm -hmm. Like I write the blogs to push out there, but what I really write them for is so we have more collateral so the sales team could follow up with people with those things. Mm -hmm. So it's like a double-edged thing. It's like a blog that I wrote, like this law of diffusion thing. Mm -hmm. We sent it to every broker, real estate broker we've got, all the leaders we've got, because it's really critical. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just another way for me to touch people. It's a nonlinear touch. So I'll write something and I'll send it to the sales team and I'll say, use this in your follow-up. And I'll say, send that blog to every leader we work with. And just, it, it, so, it's, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do there, okay? If I was a real estate agent, it would be videos. Anybody using the video? The viewed it videos? Okay, all right, so t tell, tell, tell people about that. Because it's not hard, right? No, it's so easy. And um, I send it out to the team every Monday, except for this Monday. I don't know what was wrong. This Monday, it was all... Sometimes the Google Chrome, the, yeah. yeah. So I decided not to make it that much more painful to look yeah. at. But yeah, you just install it and you sit in front of your desk laptop. And we do Facebook videos every week. Mm -hmm. So most of you, not most of you, but a lot of you guys have done a Facebook video where you just sit in front of the screen, uh -huh. press the button, smile. Yeah. Two yeah. minutes, boom. Done. That's right. And they're fun. They're really fun. Yeah, it's easy. It's one of the easiest things in the world. So where would that come in handy? So for the people that are not using it, why would you not use that tool? Would be my first question. Because it's free and it's easy. And, and what... Don't you think that would be another great touch? Like I tried to get your attention, but I didn't get it. So I go down and I'll shoot a little video. Just a minute video. Hey, click and watch this. And can I share something? Absolutely. Um, so when my clients go under contract, I've actually started, and I would have never done this until we started getting y'all's videos and then we downloaded that video, mm -hmm. video thing. And um, so I'll do a face, I mean, I'll do a text video to my clients after they've gone under contract. And because uh, I can put the husband and wife on there, and, and I do it when I have makeup. I don't do a lot of 
to do it. You know, I love the pressure when I do it. And just get real excited about, I'm so excited. And I'll find out what I can about the buyer. So I can mm -hmm. tell them a little bit about the buyer. Mm -hmm. And the feedback has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. the, the sellers really like it. They feel like it's a real personal touch because we're not necessarily with them ever right. when it gets accepted. So it shows that you're excited and you're yeah. a that's a, great, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I started doing um, them because Friday morning is my time to reach out to everybody that I have a listing with. Mm -hmm. um, that's all my follow up. And mm -hmm. so instead of doing an email or, or phone, I'll do a video text mm -hmm. and hey, let me tell you what's happened this week. And you know, mm -hmm. if I hadn't been in touch with them. Mm -hmm. So and I got that. From yeah. And just remember people learn in different ways. Some people are visual learners. They need, they need to either have it drawn up or they need to hear it in a video or they need to hear it in the audio. They don't, they don't learn the same way. So, so you're trying to connect with them in a different way. Is anybody having hesitation <laughs> about doing those? Can we count on? I do a little bit. All right. Because, just because I don't even like having my picture made, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I love seeing like Christie's and I, I love when I see people do them. I don't know why I'm just not comfortable. It would, it would almost be like somebody put the TV camera on yeah. and start, said, start talking, and I'd be like, yeah. You know. Maybe you could do a little video of the house or something like that or figure out a way not to get or in your voice. Yeah. Just All right, so let's pop quiz because we're learning. We're, we're, I'm trying to check and make sure y'all are learning what you're supposed to be learning. Overcome her objection with the five steps that we taught you. <laughs> awesome. See what she did. Okay, okay. So I made my pitch. My pitch was, right, why would you not do this if it would help you make more money? Mm -hmm. she, gave us she gave us objection, which is just opposition of thought. That's a feeling. What she's telling us is how she feels about this. I believe that feeling can be changed. Okay? You get on YouTube so, and see how to do it and get comfortable practicing. All right, that's good, but you ain't using the steps I taught you, yeah, Susan. <laughs> you jump, you, hey, what you did is jump steps one to four and get to the challenge. All right, so, okay, so start with it from the beginning. If we were going to overcome that objection, that opposition, how, what would we say first? Listen. First thing we do is what? Acknowledge. Listen, Listen and acknowledge. And so how would we acknowledge that objection? I understand. I understand. I hey, I too. there you yeah. go. I understand. I, I remember the first time I did a video and I was scared to death. I, I remember. I, I, know, I know exactly how you feel. Okay, now, so we listen and we acknowledge. So now we got agreement. She's sitting there going, okay. There's some empathy here. Now, I come in with the isolation question, which is what? This is the best question anytime you get objection to find out what the real objection is. You ask her a question, which is what? Why don't you like the way you look? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that's the only thing holding you back, is that, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. The is there any, remember this way, is there any other reason? outside of you not liking the way you look on camera that would prohibit you from doing this? Is there, any, is there anything else other than you just don't like to be in front of a camera? And she may go, no, that's the only thing, right? Okay? Well, it's the awkwardness of like okay. talking to something that's... Not talking back? Yeah. Yeah. So, and it is awkward, by the way, if you ever do a lot of video and you've done TV shows and it is, when you don't get energy back from a person, there is an awkwardness there in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like doing a Facebook Live, there is an awkwardness there. But, okay, so, so if I could show you, so now, now I'm going to validate this. I listened, I acknowledged, I isolated. We, we felt like we got the real objection. If I could show you, just through practice a few times, how I do it to calm your nerves a little bit. You would, and it, and it could help you make a lot more money. You would give it a shot, wouldn't you? Of course. Okay. Now, what did I, what what were those two moves called? Rebrand. Yep. Re so so basically, re I I uh, say that again. Redirected. I redirected her. I also validated. Validation means I kind of take what she says and turn around and use it back. Mm -hmm. I understand. If I could just ease your mind a little bit about this through practice, you would move forward with it, right? You would do this. And then I ask her, right, which to get agreement, she's going to go, yes. Now, if she still was balking on me, then I would redirect her. or I call it challenging, which is just reframing. And I would say, come on. You know, you, you, you may say, look, you, you may say, come on. You're, you know, you're a beautiful woman. You've got everything going for you. You've got a great smile. Why in the world would you not do this? Right? And what would you say? I'll think about it. <laughs> no, Jack, take that, take that out of the film, Jack. That's not how it works. That's, we're filming this, okay? Don't. <laughs> All 
I'll think about it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but, but here's the deal. We, listen, can't, can't we both agree that when you practice and you overcome, uh, practice would overcome some of that awkwardness? So if, yes. we did, if we did 10 and we didn't put them out and we got better at each one and I helped you, you'd be open to it. Yes. Okay, see? So we took that objection. Now, in the real estate world, the objections are the same thing. Timing's not right. Need to think about it. This is the formula you need to work through. But some of them Go are ahead. just laggers and they're never going to... And that's right. Now... That's right. Maybe they'll buy from me in three years. I don't have three years. I'm moving on. Yeah. So the way you could identify a laggard is ask them how serious on a scale of one to ten, how serious are you about this? Well, in their mind, theirs might be a nine. But, but you <laughs> may say, you, you, well, but, but here's the deal. You could challenge them. You could say, I, I know you told me on a scale of one to ten that you're a nine about seriousness here, but, but it doesn't, it doesn't, your actions, what you're telling me, what you're doing is not lining up. You're telling me you're really serious about this, but every time I bring you a property, that you tell me is good for you, you won't take action on it. So are you really serious about this or not, right? And they may say, well, the time is not right. So, so you're telling me that the timing has got to be perfect for you to take action on this. Maybe it's not the right time for you here, right? Now, if she just said, I'll think about it after I did all that, and I really believe she wouldn't do it, I may say maybe she is a laggard. You're really not, but maybe I would say, look, she's not buying in here. You know, so I can't, I'm trying to help her, but she's not being coachable. Or I'm trying to move forward, but she's not. And she may fall into that 34%. The faster you can figure out the laggers, but my guess is you can figure out pretty quickly with most people. Yes? I think you can when you first, I mean, I always, I try to make it an effort now just because I've been in the business almost you know, a little over 10 years yeah. to meet with somebody up front mm -hmm. because then you kind of feel them out because you can tell, like you said, yeah. I mean, how serious they are, how quickly they want to move, mm -hmm. what they're looking for, and it helps sort of, yeah. I don't know, sort of, so when you become really good at the EOS, here's what I would ask you. Would you rather know in the first 15 seconds or would you rather chase somebody for 15 months? If you say, here's what we believe, here's why we believe it, here's what we're going to do for you, and they just look at you like, you may say, this is not going to be a good fit. Like if you really train your brain to listen to their language, you may start going, this is going to be a disaster, right? I don't know, we'll know 15 months from today. I'd rather know right now. Every once in a while, a couple months later, I'll see where somebody bought something. I'm like, oh, I should have hung in there. Yeah. But the time the, and the energy that you waste on those people, yeah. then it's important. And there's a cost to that. And only you can make that decision. Mm -hmm. So listen, when you, when you build enough demand, if you start building a bunch of demand and you're selling a bunch of houses, you can qualify people as hard as you want to, right? Yeah. When you ain't making any money, <laughs> That's a different story, because in the beginning, until we get this way we want it, then we got to take on some people we, that may drive us crazy a little bit. My philosophy is just don't get mad at your money, okay? Just don't get mad at your money. If they, if they, if they, you, you don't, you're not going to like or love every single client you work with, especially if you start working with lots of people, okay? So I always look at it like this. You guys are really, really tight here. You know, you, you, you got a very tight-knit group. Imagine if there were 10,000 agents at the Wilson team. You understand what I'm saying? The Wilson group. Imagine that. Then I, so any small problem that I think is a problem, I always ask, if we had 10,000 people, would this bother me? And if it wouldn't bother me, it don't need to bother me right now, right? If every little bitty thing bothers you, you need to think on a scale. If I had this many, would it really bother me? Okay, and if it's not, you don't need to worry about it. Think like the multiples, okay? All right, so where are we at? Christy, what's yours? So I wrote down all those strategies, which are awesome, and was looking at them, and I feel like I'm a jack of all trades and master of none. Mm -hmm. It's like I do all of this, but I've never really honed in on one, mm -hmm. except for hit list. I mean, I'm a hit list. Yeah. I call, I get out, I, I, I connect all yes. the time there. But my follow-up, I would say of all these, follow-up is terrible. I mean, follow-up initially with client until closing is great. Like Christy Bradley said, after closing, I'm just... I'm weak, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's to me one of the easiest things because that's, that's right. check this thing. To that's right. That's so right. So, you know, I would look at Christy and say the top 25 could be where you make your most money, which is those 25 power relationships that you're nourishing, right. and, and they're feeding you good deals and people, right? But if you know post closing, this is an area I'm weak, how much money are we really losing? Mm -hmm. totally. And this has a lot to do with your personality style. Like if you take a Colby index, Colby's one of my favorite ones, it'll tell you like you're a quick start. Like I'm a quick start. 
and that is both good and bad. That means I see something, I'll go. Problem is sometimes quick starts are not good in impl long implementation. So it means I come out of the gate, the deal's hot, I'm excited, it's a new thing, and then I got it, and now I'm ready to move on to something else. Well, remember this statement. Most of the money you're looking for is not in the, in the, in the front windshield. It's actually sitting in the back seat. Can I just make a comment there for a quick start? Mm -hmm. If you're that profile, you need to have somebody you can delegate to. Yep. Because you, you're, you're an innovator. Mm -hmm. Your mind's already on to the next thing right. you're innovating. So if you yep. can delegate... So hire, just, or, or hire it done or whatever, like, you know, Christie's follow-up or whatever. I know sometimes you can't, but a lot of it you can, and I'm trying to get that going because... Well, and if she's good in social environments, which she is, then it, her, her, her follow-up may be to bring people together in groups mm -hmm. and where she's bringing her top past clients together, and she can bunch and batch people together to see them in one group. I'm more of a group person than an individual person. So I like to bring groups of people together and batch them together. But you, she may say, look, I can pick up a lot of money if I just get better at my post-closing follow-up. And that's the one thing she takes away, okay? All right, what about you? Well, mine really just, you know, continuing to uh, build my network sphere mm -hmm. um, in Nashville. I've only been here like mm -hmm. 12 months, so and I feel like it's working. So I do a little social media. Um, just joined two boards over the past three months, so I'm get you know get involved, and you know yeah. I'm, I'm optimistic about it, you know. So I, yeah. I, just, I know that it takes time, mm -hmm. and I'm confident in my yeah. skills to get to where I'm. There you go. So. This is big because a lot of real estate agents, new ones, come out of the gates, don't sell anything, they become incredibly discouraged, and they say they don't like this profession. No profession you go into, it come, turn, happens in the first 30, 60, 90 days. Look at people start their own businesses and lose money the first two to three years. So that, that's what you've really done, is you've started your own business. So to expect it to come out of the gates in the first 90 days, you go out and make a bunch of money is a complete myth. I mean, my personal company lost 35,000 my first year as a loss, right? And that was a real defining moment because I could have just quit and went back to coaching. And that was a real moment of truth. It was like, hey, am I in? Or am I, uh, because this is hard, am I gonna get out of this or am I gonna keep moving forward? So you are getting on the boards. I'm sure it's a little Mark Fortune coaching for you too. <laughs> yeah. He had me on every board in Nashville. <laughs> okay. Um, I put mine as follow up, but in the sense of like, so for example, I reached out to, I was going through my hit list, called somebody and left a voicemail. She called me back. I emailed her and then to schedule time, she emailed me back and then just things kept happening and we were like, so we never really made that connection. We're like, yeah, let's get together, it'd be great. And then we both just kind of stopped. And so I think it's just continuing like pushing that and closing that and getting a fit, because I'm good face to face with people. So I like to schedule those. So I struggle with that. But ultimately, I think it just comes down to being consistent and following the yep. system. That's right, that's good. I mean, I can pick out, you know, I could be a jack of all trades, but really it's like you've got a great system. You just have to be consistent every day yep. and do the steps. Yep. Yep. And, it's only go and it's only going to work if you work it, right? right? Mm -hmm. It won't work unless you work it, okay? So, and I would tell you, you need 10 of those going on at one time. Yes. You need 10 of those people. At no matter, the volume is almost always a solution to almost everybody's problem, right? Mm -hmm. If you're wor nervous, because it's only because you don't have enough deals in the pipeline. You don't have enough deals in the pipeline because you're only working one or two or three people. And you'd be working 50 people. Okay, all right, finish this up over here. Um, okay, so I, Jason and I were talking, and we're both pretty new, so I feel like we were talking about how we have somewhat of a learning curve, but there's so much that we have to learn that we sometimes feel overwhelmed. Um, but I think the biggest place where I have an opportunity is I'm really, really good at following up after I've closed the deal, but it's not about asking for a referral, it's about everything but that. Yep. Um, so I think I could get better at just asking for a referral. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think I get focused on the transactions that I do have going on, and then those are going to be done in like two weeks. I'm like, I don't have anything else. Like okay. Six months. Good. Yep. When's the best time to ask for a referral? Yeah, I should go under the contract. In the beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning. Right? When you have a contract from contract to close, the first in the beginning is the best time to ask for the referral. So give me an example of how you can ask for it because people always ask this question. How should I ask for a referral? Well, 
What's a good methodology? What's a good standard script to ask for referral? That doesn't seem creepy. <laughs> you know, because a lot of people, you know, for years it was, do you know anybody buying or selling real estate? I think that's a creepy question. I just think it's an odd question. It's like, uh, no, I mean, not, not right now. You, you know what I'm saying? I just don't think that's a good way to ask for it. That's to me personally. How, how do you think you should ask for it? I find that just for my comfort level, because I agree with you. I mean, I don't want to just say, well, do you know? It? You know but if, if somebody is thanking me or we're, you know, we're having a good conversation, you know, I'll just lead into if you know of anybody, you know, mm -hmm. that's looking to buy or sell income soon, let me know. Or okay. please feel free to pass their information along. Or if they say to me, I've got somebody, I need to send you their information, then I'll always follow up with them and say, hey, do you think it would be okay if I followed up yeah. if I contacted them? That's right. Okay. All right. So that's one way. And that's work. Does it work for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's got to work for you. Whatever your way is, it's, it's got to work for you. For me. That's right. I, I just can't be telling somebody that so enjoyed, you know, mm -hmm. helping them, you know, either get under contract on a home and love, you know, the listing process and the marketing and, and working with mm -hmm. them that, you know, you, I would love to work with people like that's right. you, like attract yeah. like. And that's right. So I think you can pivot to an EOS moment here. Mm -hmm. I believe that like gravitates toward like. I believe that association breeds assimilation. And as much as I've loved working with you, I know I would love working with your friends. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, if it were up to me, I would take a hundred of you. Mm -hmm. But I can't get a hundred of you. But I can get a hundred of your friends that just like you, right? Because like gravitates toward like. And I always say, who else do we need to be helping? And you'd be shocked how many people go, you know, I got two or three people that need to be, need to be helped. It's not awkward. I think if you create enough value for a person and you are engaged, you should not have any hesitation of asking them for future business. If this has been good for you, I know we've really enjoyed working with you. If this has been good for you, who else do we need to be working with? What are, what, do you do something for people who send you referrals? Okay, that's a, great, that's a great point. If they're in the top 25, so just remember this, all relationships are not equal in the business world. Some people are feeder systems or multipliers or channel accounts where, where they're feeding you a lot of business. I do, I, I do do things for them. Private events, special attention, more one-to-one -one time with me. You, you see what I'm saying? I kind of put them in their own category called the top 25. And it may not be 25 total people. It may be seven people. But the ultimate goal is to build 25 of these. 25 people sending you three referrals a year is 75 new referrals a year.